What's up YouTube? Well, welcome back to my channel, Katie of the House. I'm Katie, and today on my channel, I'm going to take you through our December 2022 budget. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it and start with our income here. So my husband is the only income earner in the family. He does get paid bi-weekly, so I'm budgeting for two paychecks here. And he actually did get a raise in November, so if you are not new here, then you'll know that this is a little bit higher than I normally budget for, and that is because he did get a raise, so we have a little bit more money to work with. So I'm budgeting $5,400 for each of his paychecks. And then this last income here is our Chase Rewards. So we do have a Chase credit card that is through Amazon, and you can use it anywhere, but I just use it strictly on Amazon. And we pay it off as soon as the charge hits our card. We don't wait for the month to end and get in, getting a new statement. We don't wait for a paycheck because whenever I pay for things on Amazon or order things on Amazon, I already have the money there. So I just pay it as soon as the balance or the charge hits the card so that I don't carry a balance. So if you're going to use credit cards, I think that's the smart way to do it. I don't think you should um, let charges sit, even if you plan to pay it off the next month, because you never know what could come up. I would just pay it off right away. But I'm not a financial advisor or anything. That's just me. And I do like to use credit card rewards because we have made quite a bit of money off of them so far this year. So we're planning on 150 for that credit card, but I actually think it's going to be a little bit higher. However, I always budget on the low end. So I don't know the exact amount yet because the Rewards balance doesn't update until the credit card statement closes, which is like December 4th for us, I think. So I won't know the actual amount until December 4th, but I know it's going to be at least 150. So my total budgeted income is $10,950. All right, now we'll move on to our savings and investing part of the budget. I always do this first because I think it's important to save for your future. So the first thing I have here is savings challenges. So I am doing some savings challenges this year. I started them in November and I'm going to continue doing them into 2023. So I have set aside $425 for those. And the main bulk of this money is going to be going towards my 100 envelope challenge, which is going to fund my emergency fund. So most of this is, will be allocated for our emergency fund, but I do have a couple of other savings challenges that will be going to sinking funds. So I budgeted $425 for that. So next is my IRA. So I did start my own IRA this year. So you can do a spousal IRA if there's anyone out there watching who is a stay-at-home parent. You can invest in an IRA for yourself. So look into that if you're not already doing it because it is important to kind of set yourself up for the future. So I am saving $100 towards my IRA. And then next is just E-Trade. It's just after-tax investing that we do. We're just doing $25 for that. So the total amount that we have going to savings and investing is $550 in December. Okay, next is the debt portion of our budget. So we have six debts listed here, five of which are my husband's student loans. And then one is our family car payment because our car is not paid off yet. So normally before October, I was sending a ton of money to debt every single month. But in October, we started cutting back on our debt payments because we wanted to save money for Christmas and a couple of other sinking funds that we needed to build up. So if you look at the amount of income we make and then the amount that we're sending to debt, it doesn't seem like we're sending a lot to debt. However, we are still trying to send a little bit extra. And hopefully in January, we can go back to throwing a bunch of money at debt. We just wanted to make sure we had enough for Christmas in order to not go into debt to fund Christmas. That was our number one goal, is to not take on any more debt. So for our car, the minimum payment is $600, but we're gonna send a 750. So just $150 more than we need to send. But again, right now, anything extra, we're really happy about. So for my husband's student loans, this is supposed to be the last month of the pause. On student loans, I don't know if that's actually the case now that the student loan forgiveness was blocked. I'm not sure what's happening, <laughs> but I'm just sending nothing to all of his student loans except for his smallest one. I'm only sending $50 to that. I used to do 100, but again, we're cutting back on the debt payments just the last couple of months this year. 
So the total amount that we have going to debt is $800. So next is the bills portion of our budget. So the only bills that I don't really have on here are utilities like um, electric and gas and water. I keep those in a sinking fund or an envelope because they don't stay the same every month. So these are more like fixed expenses. So first is our mortgage, which is $22.53. Our phone bill is $108. Internet is $81. Our trash service is $42. Streaming is $100. Life insurance. So this is not something that we pay every month. We pay it every six months. So this is just additional life insurance for Mark. And we started this when he was probably like 25 or 26. So it's really low for six months. Um, so that's just 80, $83 every six months. And I don't really feel the need to like save up for that throughout the year because it's such a low amount. And then we have other. So that's $400. So the total amount that we are sending to our quote unquote bills is $3,067. All right, so the last portion of our budget is our envelopes or sinking funds or whatever you want to call them. I stopped calling them sinking funds because some of these funds, we use most of the money every month, so we're not really building them up. But I like to just think of them as envelopes because if we were cash budgeters, that's how I would have this, just cash in an envelope. So first is groceries. We budgeted $13.50 for that. So for our groceries category, this covers anything that we buy for food and then any household products like cleaning supplies, um, laundry detergent, any hygiene products like you know shampoo, soap, things like that. That's all covered under our groceries. So I'm budgeting $13.50 for that. For eating out, I'm budgeting $275. For car gas, I'm budgeting $350. For utilities, I'm budgeting $400. For school, I'm budgeting $250. So this is for my two older boys. We do homeschool most of the time, but they go to a hybrid program two days a week. So we do have some expenses that are associated with that. So I'm sending $250 for their school. And this is pretty low, actually. I like to send a lot more. But with Christmas and everything right now, I just needed to keep it low and hopefully next year I could put a lot more each month to this fund. For house things, I changed this from house maintenance to house things. Um, this just covers anything that we need to fix in the house or anything that we buy for the house. So I put a lot towards this in December because I kind of depleted this in November, which was not really good because I used it to cover like, extra holiday decor that I shouldn't have bought. So 550 going to that to kind of make up for last month. Then we have our holiday and gift category, which is getting $1,500 this month. So I'm hoping we do not spend all of that, but we probably will knowing us because we do like to buy a lot for Christmas. So it's there if we need it. And if we're good and we don't spend all of that, then it will just roll over to next year. So $1,500 going to holiday and gift. We have $418 going to our car maintenance and insurance. We're trying to build this fund back up because last month I paid our car insurance. We pay it every six months. So that was a big expense. And then also I had to buy a new battery. So we actually went over budget on this category last month and I had to cover it with some extra income that came in. So it worked out okay, but we need to build this back up to pay our next six months of insurance in May. And then also because I have some more car maintenance, like routine maintenance coming up that I need to have done. So 418 for that. So next is Mark spending. So he's getting $450 this month. The reason why this is so high is basically because he wants to buy um, a graphics card for his computer. Well, that's how it started. Now I think he wants to build a whole new computer. Um, we'll see. But he would rather have money for Christmas than gifts. And I already did buy him a couple of small gifts, but most of his Christmas money or Christmas gifts is just going to um, building up his computer. So I'm going to give him 250 plus his regular 200 that he gets. So he'll get 450 total for the month. I'm just getting my regular 200. I'm hoping to not spend like any of this this month because anything that I wanted, I asked for for Christmas. And I'm hoping to just have this rollover into next year to save for like my next hair appointment. Next is my boys spending. So this covers any activities they do. And also if we want to buy them anything throughout the month. So $200 for that. 
Then we have our pet fund, which I'm sending 425 to. So this is also higher than normal, but Lucy has a vet appointment coming up soon. So I needed to put a lot of money into this to cover that. So $425. And then next is our family fund. So this covers anything that we might do together as a family or if anyone needs something that doesn't go into another budget category, like if someone needs clothes or shoes or something, this fund should cover that. So $135 for family. And then our last fund is for braces. So I'm just sending $30 to that. So the total amount that we have going to our envelopes is $6,533. All right, so that brings us to the end of our budget. So our budgeted income is $10,950 and our budgeted expenses are also $10,950. So that gives us a zero base budget. So every dollar that we have coming in or that we plan to have coming in is assigned a job. I like to do a zero base budget just because it prevents me from having extra money in my account that I'm thinking doesn't have a role that I can just spend. So that doesn't mean like my account always has zero dollars in it, but it just means all the money that we do have has a purpose assigned to it. So that is it for our December 2022 budget. I can't believe this is my last budgeting video of the year. Well, I guess that's not true. I still have to do my budget wrap up for November but this is my last budget setup for the year. This year has absolutely flown by. I feel like once you turn 18, time does start to go a little bit faster. And then once you have kids of your own, it just absolutely zooms by. <laughs> so I know everyone says that, but it's true. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.